Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Hey, I'm going to do a little repair on one of my kayaks today. I uh, did some searching on YouTube trying to find the best way to do it because looking at the, the kayak, it's not readily apparent. And so I did some searching and one of the, the things that I kept coming up with was uh, people advocating using something like that to do the repair with. A pair of vice grips, uh, while certainly multifunctional, um, sometimes it's better to do the, the repair with the right tool. And the right tool can be the difference in frustration and success. So what I did, I went online and I bought this Hobie uh, wrench. It's a, it's a specialty wrench. It uh, has these little ears on it. I thought about trying to make one because once I saw what it was, I thought, well, shoot, that's a lot of money to pay for something like that. And by a lot of money, I don't mean a lot of money. It's like 10 bucks. Um, so the part number is 71115101, and it is a wrench for removing the screw-in fittings and plugs. I'll show you in just a minute what I mean by what those are. Now, these are the type of fittings that I'm talking about. Uh, this elastic strap here is supposed to be tight, and you can tell the elastic is uh, starting to wear. These are 2010 Hobie Outbacks, and while they're not beaters, uh, because we have uh, some 2020s, but while they're uh, not beaters by any stretch of imagination, they do get uh, abused probably a little bit more. Um, these fittings right here, you can find them all over. The kayak, they hold elastic, they hold all kinds of things in them. Uh, this wrench, as you can see, it fits in these slots right here. Now, even though this is built for this, it's still a little bit of a chore to get these out. So you can imagine trying to do this with a pair of vice grips and just the, the heartache that that would cause. Once you get them to a certain point, now you might want to use vice grips because now you've got something to actually grab hold of. The camera is kind of in my way. Kind of reminds me of cleat spikes. Yeah, a cleat wrench. I hope you guys can see past my arms. I wish you basketball games on in the background, if you can hear that. Okay, we just about got this one. We have to take both of these off. And the way these, it's a solid hole. And so the way that you repair is you have to, uh, you can see that. It's just, you tie a knot in it, pull it into the recess, and then screw them back in. So, fairly simple. I, I can only imagine trying to get that started with a pair of vice grips, what, what problems that would have caused. So, if you if you have a set, and I, like I say, I felt justified in spending the $10 for the wrench because we now have four kayaks and these uh, older 2010s are really starting, the elastic's really starting to age on them. So I'm gonna start going through and replace them. So, there you go. The right tool for the job makes all the difference. Okay, once you get your plugs out using the specialty tool, be sure you cut your elastic to the proper length. Don't use the old one as an example because it's stretched out. So that's one of the reasons why we're replacing it. So the length is not what we want. So best thing to do is just get your piece out there, go from point to point, add a little bit. These are held on with knots that go inside the cap. Best way is to, uh, to tie just an overhand knot as tight as you can, then pull it back inside the cap and pull it tight with that, and that'll cinch that knot down. So do it that way. And then cut it to length. Uh, I also burn the ends just a little bit to make sure that they don't, uh, 
excessively fray. Uh, they're not going to anyway. But here's here's the next thing. When, you, when you're getting ready to put them back in here, it's real easy to cross thread this plastic. Okay, so make sure you don't get it cross threaded. It will hand tighten just a little bit. And if it just has a lot of resistance, you might use a little bit of uh, dishwashing soap uh, to give it just a little bit of a lubricant. It soap will it will dry up and it won't leave any residue. And especially if you use something like Dawn, and then make sure you get them in there without cross threading it. Okay. Full disclosure, if you look at this one right here, come on, focus. If you look at this one, you can see that I did scuff this one up a little bit. This one was extremely tight, and with that tool, it kept slipping. So what I did is I resorted back to the first no-no that I first told you about, and that is to use vice grips. But don't use vice grips on the plug. Use them on the tool. This thing's a little awkward if you're not in a good position. And since this is on a, an overhead rack and I didn't want to pull it down by myself, I was in a real awkward. I couldn't put a lot of weight into it. So for leverage, so what I did is I clamped I clamped the tool in the vice grips, gave me the leverage, and then all I did with this hand was just press down and turn, and it came right out after that. But I did scuff it up a little bit, but it was mainly just because it was in a poor position. So, another little trick. Be sure you uh, take that twist out before you get too much in there because it will it will turn inside this. You just have to get the tension off of it. These don't need to be super tight, so don't just put them in there. Good. Okay, that's good. Okay, so you've got good tension on there, and by the time you put your oar in here, snap it in there, properly tightened. <laughs>